there's only one true church. Anyone who preaches another gospel is an antichrist. You're being lied to. Hi, welcome to this episode of Christian Diversity. Today, I'm going to be continuing from the last video I made, which was about creation and evolution and science and faith issues in Christianity. And we're going to be looking at the inter-Christian debate about the age of the earth. The age of the earth is an incredibly diverse topic, particularly within Protestant conservative evangelicals in America and in other parts of the world. Some of you watching this may be shocked to think that there are millions of Christians who actually believe the earth is only six to 10,000 years old. Some of the, um, I suppose, more scholarly and scientific people of that community espouse this in scientific terms as well and will deny evolution and mainstream uh, geology. They'll deny all kinds of mainstream subjects in chemistry and physics to keep this idea going. But the motive behind that idea is simply, from their point of view, a faithfulness to the foundational Christian book, the Bible. They see that modern science, in many ways, is actually in conflict with the Bible. They won't say that. They will say that um, the interpretations of the facts are wrong. Their interpretations scientifically show a very young Earth, and that all humanity came from Adam and Eve only 6,000 years ago. The debate of whether the Earth is young or the Earth is of an old age is not just between Christians and non-Christians, it's also between Christians. Modern geology through radiometric dating posits that the Earth is approximately 4.5 billion years old. Evangelical Christians who believe in the Word of God as God's infallible revelation have had to respond to that scientific evidence. Old. Actually, 90% of all the dating methods you can use, 90% of them actually contradict billions of years. It's, as Archbishop Usher did, for instance, you only get thousands of years, not millions of years, and there is nothing, nothing in observational science that contradicts the Bible's timeline. And it shows you can believe, and I believe this, that the universe is 13.7 billion years old, the Earth is about 4.54 billion years old, life evolved over time, you can believe all of this. You can believe there were dinosaurs. If something can be shown to be definitively taught in the Bible without question, and somebody gives me a theory from natural that they think is based on natural revelation that contradicts the Word of God, I'm going to stand with the Word of God. It is actually difficult, as is reflected by the fact that the contemporary conversation in terms of the age of the earth is requiring a redefinition of who Adam was. And we've been taught that the only way to protect the Bible is through a literalistic understanding. When you go back to the time of Adam, you get a time for the creation of Adam of a little past 4,000 B.C. I get, I think, 4,224 B.C. is where I came out in, in my calculations. And that means the earth isn't going to be much older than that. There ain't no way that's possible. To say that it all came about in 6,000 years is just nonsense. And I think the time we, we come off of that stuff and say this isn't possible. A direct reading of the text would indicate to us seven 24-hour days. To flatten that out into this is simply telling us that the world was made in six days is, is almost perversely to avoid the real thrust of the narrative. So as you can see, there was a real controversy here, and each side sees their position passionately because they feel they're either defending the Christian faith by denying the accepted scientific age of the Earth as 4.5 billion years, and others will accept the 4.5 billion years and have to have an integration in their theology. If a theory of science, natural science, is in conflict with a the theological theory and contradicts it, here's what I know for sure, somebody's wrong. To get the idea of what the six days, the seven days, actually, of course, is, is all about, uh, we have to try to understand the context of the ancient world. The idea of evolution. You've got to have That's an right. incomprehensible amount of time That's right. to be even to, able to suggest the idea of Darwinian evolution. The stories of creation are, if you like, not scientific descriptions but are theological affirmations about God's truth and about how God created the world. Once you're talking about billions of years, millions of years, 
you are, first of all, going, I would say, against the clear exposition in Genesis 1 that we are talking about six days. Our differences are ones of interpretation. I believe that God creates in six literal days, but you and I both know that the Hebrew word yom that's translated day has four different literal definitions. These uh, descriptions of God working for six days and resting on the seventh are figurative, being modeled upon the idea of man. The Bible is a book of historical science. Yes. It's really primarily a book of history. Most biblical scholars, uh, like those early church leaders, they say that what we have here is an example of myth. And wow. we are losing biblical authority in this nation, and that's why we're losing the culture. It's not about the authority of Scripture, it's about the interpretation of Scripture. What method of interpretation do I use in the case of each individual passage? Some people say it's not possible to explain the world without evolution and billions of years. And my response generally is, have you tried? If people then say what really matters about Genesis is just precisely how many days it took and precisely how young the earth is, etc. Say, it doesn't feel to me as though you're reading the text or you're reading something that you have turned the text into rather than the text itself. Now it must be interesting for anyone out there um, who doesn't know about these differences within Christianity. It must be quite interesting watching from the outside to see these inner Christian conflicts going on. Um, but it's also interesting for other Christians who aren't informed about these conflicts and don't know that they're actually happening. And that's part of the reason for this video series. In the next episode, I will be looking at whether Adam and Eve were historical figures and why there is huge controversy surrounding that very subject. Thank you for watching.